Last week we started a message, and it was just introductory message, and we could not take it to you know from the book of the Bible, the examples that God had given unto us about a man who was a religious leader, a religious man from the Pharisees' background, studied in the Pharisees' school, then turning back towards the Christian, those who are believers, who was born in Tarshish. and who is from tashis not only that he had an uh, religious studies and having a religious studies then he could not understand and could not differentiate between the truth and the religious studies this subject i have taken because many of us are coming with a different background as saul also was coming with a different background saul was coming with a religious background and so also he was trained by his parents and he was guided by some of the disciples those were religious lunatic people and through them how his life went on in the religion practices and religiosity all that is mentioned the bible says he was born after sorry he was born in tarshish and after lord jesus was crucified after 5 6 years of time he became religious you know uh, like a persecutor persecuted persecution for christians being a christian and those who do not know the truth he was a religious practitioner he was hating the truth and people accepting jesus christ gathering for prayer meetings gathering for with the word of god explaining the word of god to others he did not like it and he was persecuting many other christian those used to gather like that the bible clearly gives his record as a man with a prayer a life of religiosity a man whose name was called Saul whose parents were pharisees he was also a pharisee but because of his grandparents property which was in rome he stayed in rome for some years during which he obtained wisdom knowledge and power through the roman government and he became more powerful and he understood the power of the government which supports you for any reason the word of the lord clearly says he was belonging to a church and at the same time he was not knowing the truth he was religious practicing religious therefore any brother any sister any human beings those who is to gather together with the word of god he is to hate them not only that but to please the roman government he is to catch them and bring them to roman government and hand over to them to some of them he himself has put them into prisons to some of them he brought them and gave it to the governors so that they can enjoy putting them to the hungry lions and they used to watch this show and many times the bible clearly says this Saul though he was religious but yet he did not have a fear of the true god and he was having the fear of roman government and he was taking that power into his hands and persecuting the true christians the word of the lord clearly says after jesus was crucified after 6 years of his crucifixion he was still on the run of persecution and he was on the journey to damascus he was on the dusty roads of damascus but highly charged with all type of army good horses strength of horses were very strong he was also armed with a all manner of armor and he was having a helmet and a breastplate and all type of you know roman government given armor for him and he was on the run towards the dusty road of damascus damascus that time the roads were not there except damascus athens syria turkey all these places there were wonderful roads but to damascus there was no roads but damascus people were worshiping the lord in the spirit and truth and they used to gather together during that time he made a decision that he shall go and disperse them and also catch them in damascus and this is the time that he is running towards damascus damascus people were poor they were god fearing many were believers many were trusting jesus christ our lord after the crucifixion and they were waiting for the lord's again resurrection to hear which they had heard and now they know that jesus christ our lord came for mankind paid the penalty of our sins was buried in the borrowed tomb rose again on the third day and their faith was strong in damascus people were worshiping in the corners of the areas 
they were worshiping in their houses they were worshiping with the group they were preaching the gospel and many were actually selected from damascus for preaching the gospel and proclaiming the gospel which the roman government heard they assigned Saul to go to that area now Saul is in the great assignment of uh, assignment of this roman government to catch all these believers or the people those who trust in jesus christ our lord and say that jesus died for our sins was buried for our you know curses and rose again on the third day and he is now alive but that he was trying to go and catch this you know christians those who are proclaiming his resurrection and he was on the road of damascus the bible clearly says his early life history the early life history is very very important he was a young man born in tarsus studied in athens and then later studied in rome and became more with the wisdom knowledge and power of you know the world the word of the lord clearly says acts chapter 29 21 acts chapter 21 37 38 39 and as paul was to was to be led into the castle he said unto the chief captain may i speak unto thee who said canst thou speak greek art not thou that egyptian which before these days madest an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4000 men that were murderers but paul said i am a man a city of city in cilicia 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 a citizen of no mean city and i beseech thee suffer me to speak unto the people the word of the lord clearly says paul's conversion saul's conversion was already taken place when he was on the road of damascus when he was on the road of damascus a great light hit him and he fell down from his horse and he said who are you lord when he was questioning that question asking who are you lord after falling down from the light the voice was heard by all the soldiers but they were not knowing from where the voice was coming all the soldiers those who were on the horses they heard the voice they also saw paul falling down on the dusty ground and paul is searching for something because he had become blind because of the great light of god that shone upon him and he was already convicted and converted into christianity that is believer or knowing the truth of jesus christ our lord that what they are doing is a true that jesus is a true god he is not a some religious person to be worshiped but he is a true god truly he came down to this earth died on the cross of calvary shed his blood to wash away our sins took away our curses and was buried and paid the death penalty of human beings mankind and rose again on the third day as he promised his faith stood up and then after that the word of the lord clearly says in acts chapter 22 verses 1 2 and 3 men brethren and fathers hear ye my defense which i make now unto you and when they heard that he spake to them they kept the mo- more silence and he said i am verily a man born in tarsus a city in cilicia yet brought bo- brought up in the city at the feet of gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous towards god as he all are this day the word of the lord clearly says that he was explaining to many of the followers of jesus christ and what he was saying the verse three is more important in verse three he was saying i am verily a man then born in tarsus a city of cilicia yet brought up in this city at the feet of gamaliel there he studied he went and had a theological and other studies of the religion but then he got the studies before he was convicted and before he was converted but into the practice of religion now why i am bringing this subject many of you are with a different background i am with a different background then i become a believer many children are with a different background you are also coming with a different background all the people those who come with a different background we should be able to understand there is a conviction and conversion in your life taking place but after the conviction are you steady Are you following that word that God has given unto you the day 
there you will find a man called Ananias. To Saul, God was telling Jesus Christ, our Lord. He spoke. All the soldiers they used to hear the voice, but they did not know from where the voice was coming. Paul turned. Saul, who was Saul that time, turned from the road of Damascus, went back, and he was when he was going to Jerusalem and searching for that street. That time, Ananias received the word of God from the Lord that there is a man coming to you, and his name is called Saul. When Ananias heard this voice of God in the dream and in the vision. He was terribly troubled. He was thinking, "How come this man is coming to me? He is a persecutor. He has persecuted so many Christians. He has persecuted so many Christians. How come he is coming to me? I think it is his uh, some type of trap, maybe. But nevertheless, I will slowly go to him. And he goes according to the direction that he received. When he goes, he was hesitant to pray for him because he heard about Saul. Saul is catching all the Christians." He is taking them to Roman government. He is giving them into the prison. He is putting them before the lion, hungry lions. He is also burning them on the fire and burning them on the, you know, oil like a stakes. And all this news, Ananias had it, and Ananias was very much afraid to pray for him. Nevertheless, when Ananias saw him blind, his faith stirred up because God told him, Ananias, man by name Saul, who is coming to you, he is blind. And when he saw him blind, his faith stirred up. And what did he do? He laid his hand and prayed for Saul. That time, Saul became Paul. And the very moment, from his eyes, the scale fell down, which had brought darknesses. She has put a scripture here, Acts chapter nine, verse seventeen. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, "Brother Saul." The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive. The Lord Jesus, who appeared unto you, has sent me. That's why I want to tell you, my brothers, my sister, you should be able to understand a true servant of God. A true servant of God is sent by God. A true prophet of God does not tell you, "You pay me so much so that I shall prophesy on you." A true prophet will say, "God will tell me, and I will prophesy." True servant of God will come and knock at your door, saying that God has sent me to your door, and this is the message. And when He gives you the message, your heart will be stirred. Your body will never be the same. You will start sweating, and you will fall down under the power of God, become millionaire. And still, you are waiting when you are going to become millionaire. If God wanted one man to become a millionaire, Jesus is not standing for one man here. Jesus is standing for all the men to make them millionaire. Jesus is standing for all the men to be totally healed and be delivered. Jesus is standing here to receive the breakthrough bless of God for all the people, not for one people. He comes here, not for one person. He comes here. Concept has to be understood of Christianity. Truth has to be understood in our lives properly. Prophecy, prophetical words has to be understood properly. This message I have taken because many of us have come with a different background. I am also, and after coming from a different background, how is my run that is to be understood? If you do not understand, learn from Paul. That's what I want to tell you. Learn from Paul. That is the wonderful example. Totally strong in the Christian faith, totally supported by the Roman government, having still religious and traditional practices stuck into his mind. Wisdom and knowledge was great. Power was also given. Authority was given. Entire Roman government was backing him to catch the believer, and this man, when he was touched by the Holy Spirit, when he was touched by the divine light of Christ, he was fallen down. His scale fell down when he went to Ananias' place. Come on, read it further. Even Jesus that appeared unto you in, in the, the way as thou comest hath sent, sent me. Ananias said, "God has sent me to you. You must have such a prophet." You must have such a man of God who can call and tell you this is what is going to happen. You cannot win the battle. You cannot fight against the evil power. You cannot fight against the devilic power. You cannot fight against the curses that stand against you. You cannot fight against all that because this is not a physical fight. This is not a fight against physically. Your battle is not against the flesh and the blood that you fight against the man and woman. No, your fight is in the spiritual realm. 
it is not on the same level but it is in the higher level so also your prayer has to be in a higher level your prayer has to be under the anointing your powerful prayer has to go in such an anointed way so that the anointing shall break and break all the curses and evil holds you cannot say just pray and i am praying and that will solve the problem no that is also has a power satan has a similar power how god has a power similar way satan has a power satan had a same power if you can bring fire from heaven satan can bring fire from mountain if you can divide the sea satan also can divide the sea if jesus christ of nazareth walked on the water now you are going to see in the coming days antichrist will rise up from the sea he'll be walking on the water you'll say he's greater than jesus christ but you should have the truth you should be knowing the knowledge of god and you should be able to understand paul was already studied his name was saul when he studied with gamaliel gamaliel and he studied so well he became such a traditional you know what you call radical christian that he understood the christianity according to the tradition and religious practices nobody could change his life nobody could change his ways he used to kill christians and he was satisfied he used to bring them and burn them in the fire he was happy he used to catch them group by groups and bring them to the roman government they used to put them in the prison and sometime in front of lions and he was happy he was thinking he is doing right but spiritually he was totally blind many of us come with a different background our backgrounds are not the same we have seen and tasted the love of jesus we have seen the miracles signs and wonders happening it was not known to him but yet he was saying who are you lord then the lord jesus appeared unto him in the light only not the physical but he said you are persecuting jesus christ our lord my brothers my sister from that moment onward Saul's life started changing he comes to ananias and where the word of god clearly says acts chapter 9 and ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said brother saul the lord even jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the holy ghost you shall receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit what a promise that jesus christ of nazareth gave it to ananias and who goes and prays the bible clearly says verse 5 what you put he reluctantly prayed right ah that you are you are talking about saul all right so coming back to the word of god the bible clearly says he comes with the lineage of his parents the parents were tent maker 14 years of training for him to make a tent he worked under his parents how to make a tent and he was 14 years under the tent makers that is his parents job business so also he studied in gamaliel's place and he got a wisdom and knowledge and thoroughly whatever religion spirit was given unto him this was he carried all the time which was totally against the believers and against the truth roman chapter 2 roman chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 i say then had god cast away his people god forbid for i also am an israelite of the seed of abraham of the tribe of benjamin that is saul is talking about himself and the word of the lord clearly says in philippians chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 he talks saying that my parents are hebrews and i have learned everything from my parents come on go ahead for we are the circumcision which worship god in the spirit and rejoice in christ jesus and have no confidence in the flesh though i might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh i more and the word of the lord clearly says after that he started calling himself a roman citizen that's why they entertained him much gave him the authority acts chapter 22 was 25 to 29 quickly and as they bound him with thongs paul said unto the centurion that stood by is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a roman and uncondemned 
when the centurion heard that he went and told the chief captain saying take heed what thou doest for this man is a roman then the chief captain came and said unto him tell me art thou a roman he said yeah and the chief captain answered with a great sum obtained i this freedom and paul said but i was free born the last word verse 29 then straight away they departed from him which should have examined him and the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a roman and because he had bound him this is the first persecution paul first persecution started when he became from Saul to Paul and started separating himself from the church and started believing the work of the believers and preaching the gospel not only that he started going to the places wherever he had caught the believers and he started appearing appearing unto them he started explaining to them saying that i was the one who was persecuting but i know i do no more the things that i was doing before because i was with the religious practices remember there are so many things happens when you are in a religious practice first of all you do not understand the truth secondly it might be a truth but also manipulated in your life or acted in your life in a wrong manner though you know jesus christ is alive though you know jesus christ is a living god but unknowingly some type of practices goes wrong in your life and therefore it is so important the education education is a background but truth is something different which helps you your education to take you forward but if your education does not help you to understand the truth what is the use of that education you should be able to understand the truth in acts chapter 20 23 verses 4 5 and 6 and they that stood by said revelest thou god's high priest then said paul i wist not brethren that he was the high priest for it is written thou shall not speak evil of the ruler of thy people yes then the final word verse 6 is very important but when paul perceived that the one part where sadducees and the other pharisees when he, sadducees and pharisees started asking him a question he also said to them i am a pharisee i have learned the word of god i understood what you are talking about religion and religious and tradition practices Come on, verse six again. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, "Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee. I am a Pharisee," he said, <clears throat> "son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am called in question." And the word of the Lord clearly says that how Paul started putting himself before so many. Paul's persecution is highest than all other eleven disciples. Paul's persecution is higher. He has been tortured on the oil, burning oil. He has been tortured with the, you know, poking nails. He has been kept in the prison without food and without any manner of support. He was also sent to the places where he had a shipwreck when he wanted to obey the voice of God and go to the other shore and give them the gospel to know the truth. He was so hungry for the truth. After he got convicted, his conviction did not stop at all. until he dies he was always seeing that he shall be a blessing to someone to give them the word of god give them the understanding of god give them the truth of god and he himself became a great witness in acts chapter 26 verse 4 verses 4 and 5 it says the same thing my manner of life from my youth which was at the first among my own nation and what he says further which knew me from the beginning they knew me from the beginning if if they would testify that that after the most straightest sect of our religion i lived a pharisee i lived a better life than pharisee as i am a pharisee but at the same time when he lived pharisee's life he was doing a great error against god that he never knew the word of the lord clearly says his character was so pure and so perfect in the sight of god no doubt that god selected him similarly if god has selected you he has selected you with a purpose your purpose is not ordinary your purpose is very great if god has selected saul made him a part and under the trial and tribulation 
brought him to such a type of tribulation and suffering in his life there was a great purpose of god in paul's life paul was ready to die for the gospel from where the roman government understood that this man is now standing for the believers they said next time when he comes or enters into rome we shall never leave him we shall finish him off and he had the word already from the lord disciples heard this word and told told directly to paul paul all these days you came and did very well you went to jerusalem you went to syria you went to turkey but now do not go to rome because this time they are not going to leave you instead of all that yet he prepared with the word of the lord and with the power of the lord the bible clearly says in philippians chapter 3 verse 6 that's already saying that he was zealous even come on read that okay concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless according to the law he was blameless the word of the lord clearly says he was zealous in persecuting the church not only that concerning the law of blamelessness that when you touch somebody now also people in the world they think that if they do something wrong for christians they are blessed they feel that is the christians deserve like that they are our first enemy but they do not know the truth that the christian what the truth they have the world do not have christians have the truth of the living god christian have the truth of somebody who paid the penalty of not only for christian but for the entire world who paid the penalty of their sins by shedding his own blood giving his own body and giving his life on the cross of calvary dying in the age of 33 and then brought the entire mankind freedom from the sin that they are suffering with second timothy chapter 1 verses 1 and 3 paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god according to the promise of life which is in christ jesus to timothy my dearly beloved son grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. I I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. And after this you can understand his past life, life of persecution to the church that we were just taking the previous verses where the Bible clearly says how he was persecuting the Christian. Not only that, anybody talks against saying that these religious practices are not correct. He never is to agree. He is to see that this, such people are dead. The first example of his life, first example of his life, when he found Stephen, the disciple of Jesus Christ, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Stephen, a young man, was preaching the gospel. And he come across uh, uh, Paul, Acts chapter 7, verse 57 come back verses 50 to 58 please sorry verses 50 to 58 which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and they have slain them which showed before the, of the coming of just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers go ahead who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Who is this? Stephen. He's speaking about the truth, explaining the truth. And Paul is going to come across with him. Paul is going to see this young man who is so zealous, talking with the power of the Lord, fully on fire, speaking about Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 57, 56. 55. 56, 55, okay. okay. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand this of God. This is the young man who was preaching the gospel. These other things should happen in my life and our lives when we stand in preaching of the gospel. We shall be able to see the heaven open. We shall be able to see the angels descending. We shall be able to see the power of God moving. We shall be able to see the word of the Lord moving and touching the people. Not only that, we shall be able to see the Savior who has assigned us to do the will of God and to preach the gospel. And the verse 57, 57 says, And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. 
verse 57 then then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord all these people were trying to kill stephen and during that time the word of the lord clearly says in verse 58 and, and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was saul they tore their clothes and brought and kept it before saul's feet not only that even tall saul, saul sorry saul tore his own garments when he was speaking about jesus christ our lord because he was a radical christian traditional christian religious christian but truth was not known to him and what was his purpose now stephen has to die because he is talking about jesus christ our lord and what he does come on go ahead and they stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit go ahead and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he had said this he fell asleep this is stephen who has forgiven them those who are stoning at him but if you read chapter 7 in a proper manner there the bible says saul was so angry when he was speaking about jesus christ when he was speaking the truth when he was speaking that jesus died for my sins and was buried and rose again on the third day paul saul he tore his garments and also other people and they decided to kill him and stone to death but even at that time during such persecution he saw heaven he saw jesus stephen saw heaven and stephen saw jesus christ our lord standing and seated at the right hand of god the <coughs> father and the word of the lord clearly says stephen peacefully went to sleep did not die when you sleep you will get up again when you die you will not get up again there is a great difference between the believers and the unbelievers your faith has to be strong like saul so that you shall be able to understand the day i accepted jesus why why i took jesus christ as my lord and savior why did i take the full immersion of water baptism why did i convict and confession did on the openly with all the people why did i go into the water saying that what i believe and i will follow it and after that if you are not turned then you must have a paul like example who was saul and who was similarly same like us and murdered so many christians and murdered so many people but when the conviction came his life was totally changed the word of god word of god clearly says then he started galatians chapter 1 was 12 13 14 for i neither received it of man whenever he went on preaching the gospel people recognized was it not saul isn't he is a saul now he calls himself paul and he said jesus christ of not it is alive and he said i am called by jesus christ and i am come to serve the god lord jesus who is this man and this is the example that paul gives to the people those who called him saul come on galatians chapter 1 for this? i neither received it of man neither was i taught it but by the revelation of jesus christ by revelation of jesus christ i'm not i received jesus christ as my lord and savior he revealed to me in the great light where i fell down my eyes were totally blind and the servant of god of jesus christ of not prayed for me and i got released if this has happened in your life if this has continued in your life if this has come in your life you should be able to understand you are on the right path of jesus christ our lord who showed you the way because he said i am the way truth and the life you are going to only not only know the truth but you also know the way you are only not knowing the way just to live in the earth but after the earthly life is finished you are going to be with him in the kingdom of god you are going to be in the paradise where nobody can give you the assurance and nobody can say but they will be still telling you do this do that so that you shall be able to enter into the kingdom of god jesus said don't do anything only sin not so that you shall be able to enter into the kingdom of god come on 13 12 and 13 for he have heard of my conversation in time past how that how that beyond measure i persecuted the church of god and wasted it he says that i have done this i am saul and what he says you have heard about me and the conversation that i had in the time past Many a time we have a question even after coming in the Lord. 
whether I am following in the right way or wrong way, whether this is the real truth or not. No, I will still continue in my old practices. Remember, people are coming with the different backgrounds, especially those who are not Christian. Sometimes you can hear the testimonies. What testimonies have come in their life? Why these testimonies have come? Because of their faith in the Lord Jesus. Their sons and daughters have come back from the life, from the death. From the death, their sons and daughters have come back to the life. He persecuted, he said, I persecuted the church of God. I taught them wrong things. I killed them also. I put them on stakes. I burned them. I brought them and gave it to the hungry lions. Everything I did. But now I know the truth. And the Bible clearly says, this is the first introduction of Paul's conviction and conversion. He was convicted by the light of Jesus Christ, our Lord. He was converted. He changed his name from Saul to Paul. Because when Ananias laid his hand upon him, he said, Saul, your eyesight will come back. Not only that, from this day onwards, your name is not Saul, but your name is Paul. When the name was changed to him, he became Paul and started preaching the word of God. Till he goes to grave, his life was full of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and to talk about him and preach. Paul is the only one apostle who did not marry. The rest of all other 11 were married. And the word of the Lord clearly says, he gave the reasons for why he did not marry. And he said also to the church, if you are able to remain, then okay. If you are not able to remain, better marry so that you shall not burn in temptation and you shall not do wrong things. The conclusion of today's message is only one thing, is that you should be able to understand your conviction and your conversion. As Saul is saying, his conviction and his conversion, who became Paul later, so also you shall be able to understand. You shall be able to understand after the conviction and conversion, are you the same or are you really changed for the Lord? If you are not changed in the second message, I'm going to declare about Paul, what exactly he did it so that he shall be radical Christ-believing Christian. He shall not be a religious, but he shall be believing only Jesus Christ our Lord and how he believed and how he dedicated his life. If you are making errors today, sometimes from whichever background you have come and accepted Jesus Christ, born again in the spirit and born again in the water, but yet you do not believe that my water baptism was perfect, do not believe that my Christian tradition is I want to follow, those people should be able to return to the three messages that I have. And those three messages shall really bring you back to the truth. And the truth will set you free. Remember Gospel of St. John chapter 8. Thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. As he spake these words, many believed on him. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Remember the important <coughs> thing the Lord Jesus told the Jews. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple. If you do not continue in my word, you are not my disciple. It's so simple that we can check up from both the corners of our teaching that we go through the word of God. The Bible itself is very clear to tell you. You want to follow me? You must carry your cross. But we always think carry the cross means Jesus Christ's cross we have to carry. No, he carried everything completed. But in this life, because you follow Jesus, you will have persecution. You will have trial. You will have tribulation. And that you have to overcome. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are am I disciples indeed. indeed. The next word. As he spake these words, many believed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then the truth, what exactly is the truth? What exactly is the truth? Truth that I am preaching? No. Truth that you know? No. Truth is nothing else but whatever Jesus Christ of Nazareth has said in the four Gospels. Not only that, after that, all the disciples, those who wrote, before Paul could write so many letters, then again, today in the morning I was checking, totally 14 letters he has received, written. 14. Totally New Testament is by 27 books. In the New Testament, there are 27 books. But 14 books are written by Paul. And before Paul could become a preacher, there was a preacher already who was preaching the word of God and teaching the word of God. Do you know? Peter. 
And he associated with Peter so many times. He associated with Ananias also for some times. He also associated with some other disciples. And how, what exactly he did it. They were afraid to go with Saul who became Paul because he was radical, telling about Jesus Christ. And not afraid about the persecution. But at the same time, walked with the Holy Spirit of God. If the Holy Spirit of God told him to go there, he is to go. If the Holy Spirit of God is not giving him the permission, he never is to go. But at the same time, when he heard the Holy Spirit of God's voice, how we went, what he did there, how we preached the gospel, that is very important for you and I in these days. Because these days are days of persecution. More persecutions are going to come up, and more trial and tribulation will take place in our lives. But at the same time, we can learn from Paul to do the will of God, to do the work of God, and to be faithful to God for his truth. Because when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and not him. In that only everything runs, Christianity runs in that. And God will use you when you have great faith in the Lord. Forget about the faith of mustard seed. That faith you already had, you accepted Jesus Christ, you are born again. But you should move forward as a sister, as a brother, everybody, everybody. We have to do something for the Lord that the Lord has given unto you. Let's all bow down, please. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. You've answered all the prayers yes. of all the ushers. Yes. Everyone, those who are going to celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversaries, they will be blessed. Yes. Blessings of God is going to continue upon them. Amen. And all such brothers and sisters shall be blessed, Lord. Amen. We also pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone's court cases are going to be over. Amen. Businesses are going to be prosperous Amen. because God is in control of giving them all this type of blessing. Yes, we also pray the young man suitable partner young woman shall marry in time young men shall also marry in time yes, and you will give them the suitable partners yes, it shall happen to everyone and lord you shall bless everyone those who are healed those who are delivered and keep their healing and deliverance perfect so in the days to come they shall say the lord test me and heal me yes. we also pray in a very special way everybody's jobs finances prosperity residence shall be completed lord yes, lord. lord they shall not have any fear yes. they shall know that lord is control lord is in control of my life yes, i serve the king of kings i am a child of the living god yes, he knows what to do best and best to for me for my life in every days of my life yes, let them be strong let them get every manner of good jobs good prosperity good businesses good residences and they shall be prosperous yes, every sister in the lord Every brother in the Lord shall be prosperous yes, and be victorious. Yes, Families shall be blessed. Yes, Sons and daughters shall be blessed. Yes, Good wisdom and knowledge shall continue. Yes, educational wisdom shall be given unto them. Yes, God shall give them educational wisdom, yes, knowledges, yes, and they shall shine with the glory of God. Yes, Their life shall be bright yes, and they shall be victorious. Yes, they shall have professional degrees. Yes, they shall have higher education, yes, higher yes, knowledge, yes, higher degrees, yes, professional degrees. Yes, they all shall become engineers, doctors, and great, great jobs they shall have. And they shall be sitting on a professional chairs and managerial post law. Thank you, Lord, you are going to do it. Every wife, every husband shall live together perfectly and be a great blessing of God to pray for their sons and daughters. When they pray together, your power will touch in the house. Your power will move. Your fire will move. Anointing of God will come upon them. They shall be blessed. Lord, we pray the blessings of God upon the people. Those who want to travel, be there. Give them hope with God, travel mercies, travel grace, and all manner of protection upon their lives. Young sons and daughters, as you have promised, the job shall shine. Thank you, Jesus. The job shall shine. Amen. Yes, many changes will take place on the children, your sons and daughters, those who are abroad. Amen. Many sons and daughters, their life is going to get changed, those who are in abroad. In regards to jobs, in regards to permanent residence, in regards to oh, trial and tribulation for whatever they are suffering with, no proper education, no proper shelter, no proper blessings, they shall be changed. They shall be blessed. Blessings of God will restore upon all of them. Everyone shall have a peaceful solution for their future life. Young men and young women shall have a great education, great knowledge, great prosperity and victory. All of us in the church shall be blessed. Yes, our future life shall be blessed. Yes, Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Yes, in Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's have a benediction right now. Receive this benediction. Receive these blessings of God in your homes. 
Take the power of God, anointing of God to your homes. Let this month be a month of victory, success, and blessings of God. Let everything happen good, everything happen prosperous, victorious, and our relationship with Jesus Christ shall be intact. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be with us now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Wicked in the name of Jesus. Wicked in the blood of Jesus. Wicked in the name of Jesus. Follow Eshu Masih Ki. Jai. Eshu Masih Ki. Jai. Follow 